So for all of you long time viewers, you probably know about a couple times a year we say we found another happy place. Well, we did it again. Today we are in the Cape Breton Highlands along the Cabot Trail and we cannot mm. wait to show you where we're staying. So the name of the resort is called Blue Bayou Resort and before we get to the really really interesting part, just wait for it, check out the view and how lovely it is down here. So I'm pretty sure this is salt water, we're told it's a channel but it almost yeah. looks like a lake. It does, it looks like a lake but it is salt water and look how gorgeous it is. I don't even know if you guys can see the mountains off in the background but wow the setting couldn't be more beautiful. There's also some kayaks down here and stand up paddle boards. Yeah, oh my. we just got here last night and the water I think at that time like right around sunset was basically a sheet of glass. It would have been the perfect time to go stand up paddle boarding. Maybe it'll be like that later today as well. But yeah, it's cool. There's kayaks, there's a canoe there. I think there's maybe a couple of tandem kayaks too. So if you clicked on the video, you're probably here to see the dome. So I think our plan is we'll give you guys a tour of those first because they're quite something. And then we'll see if, if the wind, you know, doesn't stay well, too strong, we'll get out in those kayaks. This here is our dome, but I think we should show you the outside before we show you the inside. Uh, we're staying in number three. I think there's 17 of them here. Look how cool these things are. And this is a part I didn't know. I didn't realize that it comes with its own full-on campsite. It does. So this is very much like a camping experience for people like us that don't really like to camp. It's glamping <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you see the inside of these domes. So let's go through what's in your area, your camping area. When you get here, you're going to have your picnic table. There is a uh, fire pit. And there's also this charcoal barbecue, but there's no charcoal, so you'll have to bring your own. Um, but you can purchase uh, firewood for the campfire. And if you don't bring your own chairs, you can rent those as well. So last night when we got here, we had the absolute perfect night. Obviously, there's no light pollution around here, so it's just pitch black at night. And you can see all the stars. We had no wind. Fire was on. We may have had some marshmallows. We might have some marshmallows at the end of the video as well. But this place has been pure magic so far. Welcome to the inside of this amazing dome. I can't get over it. How beautiful is it in here? It feels wide and open and bright. Uh, we have a king size bed. And we also have a little seating area over here with in front of the great big window. So I cannot get over how spacious it is in here. The ceilings are extremely high and it's just really interesting to look up and just see this dome shape. It makes the room feel even bigger than it actually is. I think we already mentioned the amount of light that's coming out as well. At the top there, there is, you can see right through, you have giant windows and just feels really airy in here. So we'll try to answer some of the questions that you guys might have about this place. One thing that I couldn't figure out before we got here, even from looking at the pictures, was how these would be private. I didn't see any blinds or anything. There are actually these gorgeous curtains and they look beautiful when they're closed. These, these like bright silvery color and they pull right across the uh, whole front of the windows. So very convenient that way. So you guys might be wondering about this wall and how this works because it doesn't go right to the top of the dome. Right, so on this side, we have a little, I guess you could call it a kitchen area. There's a sink, sorry about the mess. We have a lot of our groceries and stuff here, but you can wash all your dishes, bring dishes as well. And if we go all the way around to the other side of the dome, yes, you're gonna see the bathroom. So around here is our bathroom and it is a full on bathroom. They have running water, they have hot water, they have everything in here. Um, over here you'll have your shower toilet and then sink and there even is a hair dryer in here. I don't know if we mentioned but there's electricity in this uh, dome as well. So we just sat down in the best place in the dome. Mm -hmm. This is the money shot. Mm -hmm. Two chairs, little table. We need to talk about a few more things though. One thing is noise. So I think a lot of you would probably expect that you would be able to hear through the domes, maybe into other people's Yeah, domes. we were a little bit concerned about privacy, I guess, and how private they would feel, yeah. especially at nighttime. Like, would you hear everybody? Like, they're 
toilets flushing and just like, you know, random noises yeah. and stuff like that. Didn't hear a thing. You don't hear anything. In fact, I, I was very surprised with just how quiet it was. I even slept yeah. in this morning. You, yeah, this morning. The other thing with noise is I was, we were both discussing last night because we were usually up later yes. and then sleep in a little bit. In the mornings, we're like, oh, campers get up so early. We're probably going to hear people <laughs> at 6 o'clock. I think I woke up at 8.30. Yeah. It was super, super quiet. So this is basically your own little private mm -hmm. getaway in the middle of the Cape Breton Highlands. It's gorgeous. All right, so a little time has passed. As you can see, we're out in the kayaks. Someone's not doing a very good job paddling up there. Are you to be paddling? <laughs> Look how beautiful this is, though. So, yeah, the domes are back there. And then we switched over to the iPhone because I didn't want to take the big camera out here. Not that I'd expect this to fall in or anything, but, you know, just in case. So hopefully the audio holds up pretty well. So we made it over to the other side here. Now back that way, I'm not sure if you can see that. That is where we came from, the domes. And now we kind of came to this little island. Look at this, it's all white. Pretty high as well, it's about 20, 25 feet. What a beautiful spot. This is unbelievable. And I can't believe this is part of the whole dome experience. There's all these kayaks that are made available uh, for rent. It's unbelievable that you can do this. Such an amazing part of the experience. So we're actually worried it was gonna be windy. It was a little windy on shore and the water looked a little choppy, but it's pretty calm and yeah, just really uh, quiet and serene. It's quite nice out here. It's so calm out here. <laughs> We're just we're on the other side of the island now and it's like super calm here. Look at the water. I know, you can see right through to the bottom. How is it by the way, temperature wise? It's quite warm. It's nice. Oh what a spot. Look at that. We just came right right around there. What do you got over there? It's pop. <laughs> <laughs> the good kind. Craft pop. Yeah. I know what it is. It's craft beer. So we brought a couple of beers with us. Look, this has a little holder. I'm wondering what this is. It's a do-gooder. It's uh, upstream. upstream. Where's that from? PEI. I'm not sure it's PEI. <laughs> Wait, why are we drinking PEI beer in <laughs> Cape Breton? I don't know. We should have Big Spruce or Breton. We should. <laughs> All right, it's time to see if this beer tastes better out here on water rather than land. Yeah, not too bad at all. It's an American Pale Ale, by the way, if you happen to be uh, wondering, but I think we're gonna have to talk a little bit more about this view. Everything we filmed so far, it just feels so Canadian. And like sitting here on, it's not a lake, but it feels like a lake with all this greenery around, these mountains. It just, it doesn't get much more Canadian than this. Just found this little, uh, what'd you call that? Almost looks like a tree house or like a look off. I don't know what it is. Yeah, just randomly. On the other side of this lake just again to give you guys perspective we're pretty far out here right now so we saw this uh from across the way and more big kind of white cliffs that are probably oh i'd say 30 or 40 feet high not sure if the camera does that justice but it's so pretty because when you're across uh, the lake you can see this right mm -hmm. you guys heard us talk about the cabot trail and the cape breton highlands by now but hopefully we're giving you more reasons to come up here and check this place out it's honestly just pure magic i think this whole area really isn't where a lot of the tourists come there's not a, a lot of like attractions here that you would think of like the skyline trail and inganish beach and things like that but yeah it's all this stuff it's kind of like the secret stuff these little lakes these channels I mean, look what's behind me right now. It's unbelievable. So I think we're gonna try to head back in, enjoy the view while we're at it. And maybe once we get there, we'll try to give you guys an even better view.
All right, we sort of got this lit. We'll see if we can keep it going. Last night we were able to achieve this, so fingers yeah. crossed we can do it again. Looks like Trevor got the fire going. I've got, um, what do you call these? Our little sticks to make marshmallows. I don't know if there's a technical term for them, but getting them all ready for our marshmallows. So we got this little knife. It's very handy. It's like a little pocket knife that is. Uh, is working well. We weren't sure what to do. Like we needed a few basic utensils. We'll show yeah. you more in a few minutes here. But this was one of the things we bought just to Yeah, do it's too bad we probably can't bring it uh, traveling with us because you definitely can't bring this on an airplane. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's cool. It, uh, so it has the knife on the side and then you tuck it in. You just kind of pull out that edge there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And it tucks right in. I like that. Voila. <laughs> So we got some other nifty little things with us uh, today. We just got these the other day and they'll definitely be traveling with us. They are sporks, kind of a funny name, but they've got a spoon on one side, a fork on the other side, and actually a little bit of a knife there too. So that's very convenient. We also got uh, a little kettle that goes on the barbecue. You can put it on a little stove, that kind of thing, but it's just a little metal guy. It's great. We actually made rice in it the other day as well. And we showed you guys these before, but they're for coffee. Uh, we take them everywhere around the world with us. Perfect for making coffee. Wherever you are, you just need hot water. Some coffee goes over um, your coffee cup and then you wait about five minutes. So convenient. All right, dinner is served. We're going classic and super classy tonight. We got some sausages going on. I don't know if you can see this down here. Oh, yeah. We made them very, very fancy with all the stuff that we had. Uh, we didn't have buns, but we did have some multi-grain bread. So we're going a little healthier tonight. <laughs> uh, we got some cheese on there, some spicy mustard, a little bit of onions, and uh, here's a little tip for you. We didn't want to buy a whole bottle of ketchup because we have one at home and we didn't bring it with us. So when we went to McDonald's the other day to get some uh, uh, breakfast, I guess, we just said, hey, can you throw in some ketchup in there? They didn't question it. They're not gonna you know, ask us if we actually want ketchup on our Egg McMuffin, which we did not, but now we've got the ketchup. A couple other things to talk about here. So I still have a little bit of beer left. I'm gonna finish that off. It is from the Church Brewing Company in, well, it's from Nova Scotia in Annapolis Valley. And well, this is not from Nova Scotia, it's a Pinot Grigio wine, Anna's working on that. And down here, if we come this way, we have a very simple Greek kind of pasta salad. We just got this from Sobeys to keep it easy because we don't, you know, we travel a lot. We don't have all these utensils for camping and different pots and pans. So we knew we were gonna barbecue because we had this guy, but we thought we'd get this. I'm gonna try this really quick. Hmm. I have to say, I mean, this is just from our local grocer. So if for all of you that are watching are not from Atlantic Canada, I don't even know how far Sobe stretches to be honest, but um, it's just a grocery store around here, but they do have some freshly made things that you can get from time to time. And this is really good. I have, this is going to be perfect with the sausages that we have down here. All right, here we go. It is time for the main attraction. This looks like a proper camping sausage, if I have to say. You got the charred marks, you got the ketchup, you got the mustard, the hot mustard at that, and jalapeno Havarti. The bread could be a little fresher, not gonna, not gonna lie. It feels a little hard, but we're just gonna go for it. We're camping today. I'd say we're roughing it, but you know, we got the dough and we're kind of clamping, but you, you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. This turned out so well. So we took our time trying to buy sausage today. We looked for, our method was kind of like the lowest amount we could find, which was four. It also happened to be the price of like a 12 pack. So we figured that was good. On the package, it also said, you know, no preservatives, yada, 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 all that stuff. So it sold us. We cooked it perfectly. It's burnt a little bit. And I say that in a good way. It's like charred marks. We love that. And in the inside, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but it's it's really chewy and it's tender and it's very good. The hot mustard has got a lot of zing, so if you're not into that, maybe don't get hot mustard. Ketchup's fine, it's McDonald's ketchup, can't beat it. The only thing is the bread, but I'm not gonna complain too much, because you know, here we are in an absolute perfect setting while we're clamping in the Cape Breton Highlands. What a day. So I've been looking forward to this all day. I don't know, I legitimately don't know the last time I roasted a marshmallow. I feel like it was when I was a kid, so <laughs> let's hope I remember how to do this. Well, you have it on the end of your stick. Now, here's the ultimate question. What kind of marshmallow do you like? I would like it nicely brown, but not black. But if it gets black, that's fine. All right, well, let's see what she can do. 
We almost had an emergency. It started to melt and was about to fall off, but I think I rescued it in time and it looks pretty darn good. I think I did a good job. It's probably really, really hot in the middle, so hopefully I don't burn myself. Taste test. Mm. Is it everything you remembered about mm. So yummy. Mm. Melty, soft, a little bit of charredness to it. Mm. That was that was a good marshmallow. <laughs> All right, it's clearly my turn now to uh, roast one of these marshmallows. All I kept thinking when Anna was uh, well roasting hers, we almost didn't get marshmallows today. And I have a question for you guys: Is it even camping or glamping if you don't roast a marshmallow? Let us know in the comments down below. We have had the absolute best day here at Blue mm -hmm. Bio Resort in the Cape Breton Highlands. We've already been talking about when are we going to get the chance to come back yeah, here. Yeah, I think we were maybe here like three hours when we already started strategizing when oh, we can come man. back again. It's amazing here. This is just incredible. It's an amazing, authentic experience. Mm -hmm. If you get the chance, no, not even if you get the chance, just make sure you come to Cape Breton when you visit Nova Scotia. If you're from Nova Scotia, get up here to Cape Breton. Yeah, this is our first, well, my real first time in this area of the province. Yeah. It's just crazy that I've never been here. Yeah, some other things we didn't say, the owners here are absolutely incredible. They're a lot of fun. They're so knowledgeable about the area as well. They can tell you where to eat. They'll tell you where to go. They'll give you an itinerary. Heck, they'll even stop by your campsite at night if you're out. They're really amazing people. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. If you got this far in the video and you're like, who are these guys? I'm Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit subscribe to follow along and hit the thumbs up button. Leave us a comment. We subscribe? love to hear. Did we say that? I think I said subscribe. Okay. Do all the things. It helps us out. Hopefully we are showing you guys a side of Nova Scotia that you've never seen before. But for now, we're just going to watch that sunset. You can see it behind us sort of through the trees. And Look maybe behind. we'll eat more marshmallows. Yeah, we're going to do more marshmallows. So. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it. <laughs> From the Cape Breton Highlands, wishing you delightful travels. Put the load right on